Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this weather presentation for July 15th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that every single one of you please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 700 subscribers and to our next long-term goal of the big 1,000. So please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications as well as watching the whole video. Both of these things really do support my channel and, you know, watching the whole video, it's a win-win. You know, you, you get the best for the content and I get to watch time, which I really do need for my channel. And please also like and share this video. Thank you. Now, let's get on with today's video. So, this is what our video is going to be about today. And no, this one, I will not be showing this for 10 or 15 minutes, but this is what we're going to be talking about today. It is a tropical wave that is looking very interesting and something we do definitely need to watch that is off the coast of Africa, in case you don't know that it's Africa on the right side of your screen. And while it has not been recognized by the National Hurricane Center yet, that might that might be a possibility tomorrow, um, on tropical tidbits, the satellite imagery issue what's called a manual floater. Um, and that means that that, that this is zoomed in right, on, right all over this tropical wave. They made a manual floater, which means this is now considered something to watch because when Tropical tidbits and the satellite imagery, and when they issue a manual floater, it focuses a part of the satellite um, on on the storm. Okay, this isn't just a zoomed-in version of the satellite. This is actually focused over the storm, which means it's now something to watch. And I can see why. All right, it's definitely starting to look like it's rotating, and the models do definitely have some confidence in this as well. Um, this is nothing abnormal, and this time of year, July 15th, I mean, we're pretty much right on time to see tropical development come off the coast of Africa here. Um, and you can see this storm, it's trying to rotate. It doesn't have like a organized center, which isn't complete. It's not expected of, of this storm yet because it's only a tropical wave. Um, what's really important to these tropical waves is that they start to get some upward motion convection. And, and, the, and what really needs to happen is that the environmental conditions need to be conducive. We're not expecting much out of this yet because it's a tropical wave. But once it starts to get this act together, as long as conditions are conducive, this storm can really develop. And you can see it's got a lot of convection. We might even have another wave that could even be attached to this storm or even possibly be another one. So our sea surface temperature anomalies are definitely above average in this region. Mainly though, uh, pretty much average. You see some orange spots, mostly orange, but there are some areas of white and a little bit areas of blue as well. But overall, we're slightly above average in terms of our ocean water, which is obviously positive for development. And our ocean temperatures have really jetted up as well. We're starting to get close to 80 now off the coast of Africa. We weren't, we mean, we were in the mid 70s not too long ago. So we're starting to get close to 80 now. And once the storm, if it, if it goes south enough, it can stay in those 80 degree waters. But once it heads west though, all right, this is where the fun will be for the storm. As it heads west, ocean will get warmer. The only thing we're going to have to watch for is dry air and wind shear. Because you know the water is going to get warmer, that we know, but we're still a little bit uncertain about is the other conditions like wind shear and dry air. Look, you can see though how the pressure ice bars look pretty packed together. And all, like a surface low, nice organized low seems to form Friday morning. At 1,007 millibars of pressure according to the GFS model here. And moving on in time, you can see that the low forms and it kind of dies out. And then we have something else that could be forming from that. Okay, and then that's that's just kind of taking it several days out. So maybe a low forms, and then the Chautauqua wave just kind of dies out. So this could like form off the coast of Africa and then die out once it hits the Azores, uh, the Cape Verde Islands. Sorry, wrong set of islands. The Azores is up here. Um, but no, the Cape Verde Islands, the low could form the other Cape Verde Islands and maybe could have strengthened beyond that. It might even weaken beyond that. Um, definitely something to watch here because this could bring some some serious impacts to the Cape Verde Islands if it can hold its uh, hold its strength together. It can keep, if it can keep itself organized here. So. Taking a look at this on the surface pressure, I'm right, looking at the surface pressure and surface winds, and you can see there's the low as it heads that little piece of energy it heads towards the Cape Verde Islands. This could even this could just like this low could be like a distraction and something else could even form off of this. Um, the National Hurricane Center might be starting to watch this storm tomorrow. Uh, we're going to see, but there's the low hitting the uh, Cape Verde Islands uh, Saturday at 8 p.m. here. All right, and then moving beyond that, nothing really happens to this. I mean, we do get, we do have a strengthening high pressure here. We do have some low pressure systems moving. Uh, looks like a darker area of blue, maybe some stronger surface winds starting to develop. Maybe something else could form, but nothing looks. We don't see like a circular surface low starting to develop. Not really anytime soon. But this low could have the chance to develop as long as the conditions around it 
are conducive. And we, when we look at the cyclone vorticity signature, okay, this version of it I do show sometimes, you can see that the low is spinning, all right? If I kind of drag the loop back and forth, you can tell that it has a little bit of a, a, a leftward circular motion here. And we do actually have a band of thunderstorms that develops like this. It almost looks like a frontal boundary, like a mini frontal boundary here, which is really fascinating to watch. And might even weaken beyond that, but take a look at what the GFS model hints. A huge piece of energy comes from the northern part of Africa, and it, and it just starts and it just starts spiraling its way towards the Cape Verde Islands. Okay, as you as you head towards uh, 2 p.m. on Tuesday, and it moves out over the coast of Africa, it just explodes in growth. All right, it, it doesn't explode in size. However, you can see it looks a little a little bit weaker by this point, but it does definitely look uh, very large there. So maybe a little blast of energy coming from northern Africa. And these are the blasts of energy we're going to continue to watch because there comes another one. All right, and here maybe another another low pressure separate from the one we're talking about today, but um, that that's like towards the end of July, beginning of August. So that one we're going to have to watch too. But in terms of folks, you know what we have now here, maybe that low spins and then another explosive area of cyclonic energy coming off the coast of Africa could either that could develop by itself or it could help the first the initial wave of energy develop. Now the good thing is that once now when you talk about wind shear. Obviously, less wind shear for the tropical cyclone, the better. Um, right on the coast of Africa, we do have some above average wind shear, but once it gets off the coast of Africa, once it gets just past the Cape Verde Islands, wind shear values, at least over the next five days, from now through July 20th, seems to be anywhere from 10 to 30 knots below average, which is good news for the tropical cyclone. All right. And you can see as we head further in time, like the 17th to the 22nd, how we still have this firm area of blue here embedded between orange here and orange here. So that one region, this region right here, uh, from the northern tip of Africa down through Puerto Rico and Haiti, all right, right here, if it can make it to that below average wind shear area, I think this storm does have a shot developing. Look at this. I mean, towards the end of July, in terms of more tropical waves, you can see that more blue is starting to show up, meaning less wind shear. Now, looking at the gem model here, let's take a look at the gem model. Uh, and as you can see, a surface load does start developing amongst all this mess. You can see it right here. I mean, up out of this whole area of rain and moisture, there is a surface low there, all right, which obviously could potentially mean development. Um, this could happen over the next five days. This could happen over the next seven, ten days. But it does like it could be developing short term here, and but it could be staying at just like a surface low for it might the surface low might develop in 24, 48 hours, it might develop in 72 or 96 hours, but it just might sit there and maintain the same strength for days all right so it may not move all that much so uh but just the fact that we have this huge area of moisture coming off the coast of africa definitely something to watch could it could this help you know develop another system could another you know could another system uh, come offshore and merge with this one they've developed something even bigger um this is all factors that we had to consider and this is why it's very important um that i had to do a video on this today because i felt like it was definitely uh worth talking about here and when you look at these surface winds I, nothing's going to look too impressive. This is just a tropical wave. And a lot of the guidance was suggesting is that the storm kind of drops south a little bit and it just slowly guides its way to the north. All right, that's where the low is right there in case you guys can't see it. All right, it is right there. It's not too small and kind of insignificant for now, but we'll see if that the energy can collect and then some other lows start speeding off the coast of Africa. So who knows? This may be a distraction for another low, but this is definitely a group of tropical waves that we definitely need to watch that come off the coast of Africa. I will also because we have these... Kind of like the three amigos. The other high isn't really visible because the other high is over here. Um, I can tell because there's a little dot if you can see it right here. All right, so these are the three amigos. Okay, you can't see the other high because um, sometimes it's not drawn on the map. But there you go. Here's the three amigos. So here's the three highs. Here are three amigos, and they're going to help to steer the storms westward. All right, so any tropical activity that does develop, they got the three amigos, the three high pressure systems, all push them west westbound here. And when you look at the cyclonic vorticity signature, here we go. And you go to the next three days. This is now, all right, this is about three or so days away. And you can see there is a jumbo area of energy coming off the coast of Africa. All right, even though it's already, looks like it's it's already developing now, we may even see another area of energy develop, and that could even develop as well. Uh, but look at this. Look, at, look how if it just plays back and forth. Look at this area of rotation right by Africa right there. Looks looks very uh, circular here. It looks like it could develop into something. All right, these are all groups. Um, this the video like this video is basically not just talking about this right here. All right, this is one of the chalkways that we're definitely gonna need to watch because looks like it's spinning, could gain could gain some strength. 
Um, however, this could also lead to several other tropoids like this one that you see here and another one here uh, that could develop into tropical cyclones in this say near future. Now this this one could also develop. I'm not giving this current one a zero percent chance to develop. I think it has a good chance to develop it. Development and if you stay for the rest of the video, you guys will be able to see the kind of the models and the and the development chances here. But as for the uh, wind shear anomalies from the gem model, as you can see through July 20th, they have an even more expansive area of blue, which means even less wind shear. So the gem model will probably develop it more than the GFS would, honestly. But eventually, though, they say that by the 25th, more wind shear will build by the coast of Africa, and that's obviously bad for development. But in terms of near term, gem model has less wind shear than the GFS model. But in the long term, we have like a flip of the switch here. So it's kind of the opposite. Gem model has more wind shear and GFS has less. So it could pretty much go either way here. I mean, the storm, I mean, if the storm happens to make it out, if you look on the right side of your screen, if it does happen to make to the make it out to the islands here, there are some highly favorable conditions for development by the islands if the storm happens to make it out here. Obviously, if you were to pan this map out towards the coast of Africa, you can see that it eventually goes from red to orange to yellow and eventually green. And so probably some yellows and greens sitting by the coast of Africa if you were to extend this map out. Obviously, the map doesn't go out there, this particular map. Um, but definitely some un slightly unfavorable conditions for development right now. But if it can make it uh, the farther westbound, it can make it before weakening. Um, I think that yeah, it does have a better chance of development. When you look at the dry air, because we know that dry air is something that holds back tropical cyclones. And you see, look at all this dry air coming through. But luckily, the tropical wave, at least parts of it, uh, do seem to be... Um, that What I call a safe zone is around like 10 degrees north latitude and lower because during the early part of the season, you'll see a lot of tropical waves, quote-unquote tropical waves, form at 10 degrees north latitude and southward because that's where that's how they avoid the dry air. It's like, oh, it's, it's, like, it's like a traffic cone. They're trying to take a detour until conditions will get better, and that's how real-life traffic works too. Um, and you can see... There's your tropical waves sitting just below the dry air because they always got to avoid the dry air somehow unless the dry air comes out of nowhere and just completely completely kills the storm. But as of right now, it's it's going to be moving in a stationary, maybe towards a, a northward motion, but eventually it's going to have to hit that dry air um, unless the dry air does die out. But as you can see, in terms, it looks like the motion of dry air, we could have another air of dry air spiraling in towards the tropical Atlantic. But in terms of the Caribbean doesn't have too much dry air, Gulf Mexico really doesn't have much. Same with parts of the Western Atlantic here, like by Bermuda and the Bahamas. So that's good news. Well, I mean, bad news for you guys, but good news for a tropical cyclone that wants to form there. It's like, hey, this is my little playground. But in terms of ensemble-based probabilities from the NCP, the GEM model, the European model, the FNMOC models, all these models here combined do give this thing a 30 to 40% chance of development off the coast of Africa. And this is within the next five days here. So if the National Hurricane Center were to put out something, I'd say they probably put out a little area to watch, about 10 to 20% chance of development. And they'll they'll change that as you get increased um, like more model data coming in. But in terms of the model tracks, and this is the NCP tropical cyclogenesis as well as some model based tracks. Um, and you can see that we're focusing on the one out here by Africa. In case you guys don't know which one we're talking about, they um, this this particular map does show an eighty to ninety percent chance of development. And you can see how the uh, ensemble models take it like northward, and then it starts to make it turn westward. So it's kind of too far south. So the storm's going to rise north with that upper motion here. And it's going to start making a turn westbound. And maybe one particular model has it really bullish and already had it kind of moving ahead here and, and having it head towards the islands. But you can see the general trend of the models here it does have it make like a north turn and then more of a west turn out over the tropical Atlantic. Now, when we take a look at the... Now, this is basically the NCP, GEM, and F, FNMOC, except this time this isn't including the European model. Uh, you can see when the European model is not included, the chances actually go up to 40 to 50%. When the European isn't included. So what does that tell me? Well, since the European lowers the average to 30 to 40 percent as opposed to 40 to 50, um, that tells me that the without the European, since the development chances are higher, that tells me that the European model gives us a low chance of development. That's what that the, my predictions are based off this data. But still, 40, 50, 30, 40, 50 percent chance of development is still a decent chance. We've seen storms develop from 10 percent chance before. We've seen them you know, not develop from 80 percent chance. So it can really go either way here. When you look at this last particular map here of the tropical cyclone genesis, kind of a different one. You can see 70, 80 percent chance of development, making a north and then eventually a due west turn. And depending on when that happens, if maybe if it happens sooner, if it can avoid some of that dry air, maybe it'll develop a little bit more. Maybe if it makes a northward turn later, maybe it encounters more of that dry air, maybe less chance of development. All factors we have to consider. But this is definitely something to watch. 
and this is something that could mirror uh, more tropical waves and potentially more tropical cyclones in the coming weeks. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweather Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.